Hey everyone, it's Matt, back with another dash cam review, and this time it's with a manufacturer that I haven't reviewed before. This one's Nextbase, uh, and this is the Nextbase 222, so it's a 1080p front camera with a high definition screen as well. Uh, let's check out some of the other features here. So yes, it's a two and a half inch screen. It does have intelligent parking mode, so it automatically starts recording if there's motion detected, and it records on a micro SD card of up to 128 gigs. So the micro SD card isn't included, but uh, in case you're interested, Nextbase does have an accessory which comes with um, a carrying case and a 32 gig micro SD card. So let's open up the box and take a look inside. So I've already taken a couple things out of bags just to show you for the sake of ease. There's a decal here you can put on the back of your, um, the back of your window. There's a quick start guide as well as um, this. I actually pulled this out of the charger. This piece here that just says that we've got to take this back inside and charge it for two hours prior to using. And you can see that it's got um, instructions to visit the user manual online. So this is the camera itself and some of the accessories that come with it. So here's the cable. It's a long cable, obviously, so that you can hide the wiring and um, plug it in. Some other accessories here. This is the base, and I'm going to show you how this mounts really shortly. It's kind of cool. It's magnetic. And just some other accessories here and there. So basically the way that this works and the way that this is going to mount onto the car is, I'm sorry, mount onto the windshield is it's actually a magnet. So you're going to pull this piece off here and then you grab the, um, the base, which is here and it's actually just going to clip in like that and then you just move it around to whichever angle you want so i'm going to take this inside and charge it and then um, we will take this out for a spin all right i'm back outside and there's one thing that i just quickly wanted to draw attention to and that was this suction cup mount that i took out in the original video uh, and i just kind of glossed over so i thought i'd bring it back and show you that if you did want to do a suction cup mount instead of an adhesive mount or for example if uh, this adhesive has gone dry and the backup adhesive has as well, you can always pull the adhesive off and there are a couple little screws underneath this thing and you can just mount, um, mount this base to the suction cup mount and then use that instead. Um, I'm just going to be using the adhesive this time around, so no big deal on my end. With the dash cam charged, I'm going to turn it on here. I already did go and set the date and time and things like that. As you can see, I just set the date and time. You just have to click menu and all of your options are here. So this isn't touch screen as a reminder. So you'll have to use the up and down arrows here. Um, just a couple of things here. Your video length is three minutes at a time at most for uh, recording. You can change your resolution and whatnot here as well. Turn your sound on and off, turn your time and date stamp on and off, turn your G sensor on and off. So you've got a few different options here to play with. Um, but it is pretty simple. You just get it going, hit the record button, and it'll uh, start going. I decided to put the dash cam behind my rear view mirror in my uh, peripheral view here uh, and just keep it out of the way. It does come with a long enough cord that you can start hiding the wires up here and then feeding it down below to your power source. Um, it is a very, very small dash cam, and so it hides quite well. Um, one thing that I would recommend is you'll probably have to tinker a little bit with the intelligent parking settings. This can be a little bit sensitive, and uh, I've noticed that uh, in some cases, if you've got it set to too high of sensitivity, the slightest jostle will actually turn it on. There are a couple different ways that you can view footage off your dash cam. The first that I'm going to show you is uh, directly off the camera itself. What you do is you take it off the mount and you press the mode button, and it'll bring you here where you can start viewing any footage that you've recorded. And as you can see, it's nice and clear, it has the timestamp itself. There's options here. Remembering that this isn't a touch screen, you just hit OK again, and that'll shut things off. And then if you want to move up and down to the next video, you're not going to be able to do that until you press mode again to actually stop the video. And then you can start to move through your videos themselves. There is one recording mode that I did quickly want to show you, and that's here. You might notice the little lock at the bottom left-hand corner. 
And this is what happens when the uh, parking mode engages, the intelligent parking system, the intelligent parking mode, whatever you want to call it. And that's when this engages and starts automatically filming. So in this case, um, I was throwing a couple things into the trunk of my SUV and it automatically turned on and started recording. And as you can see, it just starts recording and it keeps going here until you turn it off. And I, I actually heard the camera come on, so I ended up coming to the front seat and turning it off a couple seconds later. Uh, and so that just kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying with maybe you want to tinker a little bit with that intelligent parking mode and the sensitivity settings to make sure that it doesn't come on uh, too quickly or too prematurely when you don't want it to. Here's the second way to view footage. Take it straight to your PC. Here's some directly recorded dash cam footage that I'm showing you. There is the MyNextBase Player app, which you can download for your PC or Mac. The MyNextBase Player app allows you to cycle through all your recorded footage as well as upload to various social media platforms or send to your insurance adjuster. It's a free download for your computer from NextBase's website. If you're looking for mobile app support, unfortunately the 222 doesn't have it, but other NextBase models do. One other feature that this does have though is cloud storage. You can also upload some of your footage to the MyNextBase cloud storage app where you'll be given a PIN number to access videos you've uploaded. This is also a free service. The NextBase 222 dash cam features two different recording options. It records in 1080p and 30 frames per second, or can be switched to 720p for recordings of up to 60 frames per second. As I'd shown before, the longest continuous loop is three minutes at a time, and you can tinker with a few other settings here and there too. One of the most important things that I would recommend is finding the right settings for camera sensitivity. The G-Sensor in Intelligent Parking Mode can trigger quite easily if you set things too high, and you may find your camera recording at times you wouldn't expect it to, and therefore you then do run the risk of potentially overriding other data. That aside, I like a lot of things about this camera. I like how small it is, I like the magnetic base and the secondary suction cup option, and I think the recordings themselves look great whether you view them on or off the camera itself. I'm going to leave you with a couple of minutes of night driving footage with the sound on, and I've turned all the timestamps on now too, so you can see just how it looks with that too. Since the camera is so close to the windshield, all you could hear on that daytime footage was the clunk of the windshield wipers, so I just muted it all. There's one very big ease of use in all of this video footage. Since there's no bells and whistles around encoding GPS coordinates or speedometer readings, it is encoded in straight MP4 formatting. That means you don't even technically need to download my next basis player for this camera. Other cameras with those features might require you to view directly off the app, and I'll let you know as I test those. So I'll leave you to this footage now. At the end of the day, the NextBase 222 is great for a novice user. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, and some people that are used to, say, rear cameras or uh, navigational GPS might want to skip this one and move on to some of NextBase's other offerings, but this was easy to install, it's easy to use, I love the mounting options, and this is now available at Best Buy and online at bestbuy.ca, along with the accessory pack. Um, so thanks for watching the review. My name is Matt. I'll be reviewing more Nextbase dash cameras in the future, and this is the first of many Nextbase reviews that you'll catch, so 
Uh, subscribe to the blog and check back later for more just like this. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.